Suicide Squad director says Harley's arc was eviscerated by Warner Brothers. Many movies have been forced to deal with the heavy hands of studio interference, but few were meddled with quite as publicly as Suicide Squad. When the antihero ensemble was first announced, the man behind Harsh Times, Street Kings and End of Watch seemed like the ideal choice to direct a movie all about the bad guys, but it would be an understatement to say that David Ayer's creative vision was heavily compromised. Having already been faced with a rushed pre-production schedule, Ayer was then forced into heavy reshoots when Warner Brothers wanted the tone of the movie to reflect the well-received first trailer, and at one stage there were even two separate cuts of Suicide Squad being assembled to see which one would gain the studio's seal of approval. A huge amount of footage ended up being left on the cutting room floor, and Ayer hasn't exactly been shy in voicing his opinions about the restrictions that he was under in getting the movie finished on time. When you watch Suicide Squad, it bears all the fingerprints of studio interference, with characters and subplots that either feel half-baked or abandoned entirely. In a recent Twitter exchange with a fan, Air responded to criticism about Suicide Squad's apparent overly sexualized depiction of Harley Quinn, and how differently the character was presented in Birds of Prey. The filmmaker responded with brutal honesty, saying that her arc was eviscerated due to political reasons aka studio interference. Not only has Air apologized for reducing Harley to nothing but glorified eye candy, but claiming that the movie was originally intended to be her story indicates just how badly his plans for Suicide Squad were affected by bowing down to Warner Brothers' studio-mandated requests.